I got digital dash, can't ride with a art. I walk in the store and I buy the stock. I hide in the bins and pull off the lot. Got two from the diamond, it cost me a lot. They flying like birds, but drop on this hot. 400 degrees, I burned up the block. Burn out, make one call, they turn out. See, see the gang, get the word out. When the shit getting hot, you the first out. Cover my wrist with a watch and I flooded with rocks. Now I look at the time all day. Be high, right through your block and I drop off the top and I know you can see my face. You my dog at the end, don't care what the bitches say. Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Fizz Baggy Baby. We get another video today. I'm coming to you guys with the best slasher build in NBA 2K21. Now, that name might be a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Might mess you up on what this build, you think this build can do. This is like the build from last year that was an inside out playmaker, offensive threat, scoring machine, anything like that, man. This build is a build that is going to be by far the most fun build to play with in this game. You can get contact dunks, you can shoot on it. And when I say you can get contact dunks, you get the ability to unlock the contact dunk packages. You can get sharp takeover on this build. You can actually shoot really good on this build. You can speed boost on this build and you can actually play defense on this build this is a build that literally can do it all i'm gonna just say that right now now in my opinion this is by far the most fun build in this game like my slash playmaker it can go crazy but it's inconsistent shooting but if i go on a play shot it's gonna be able to go crazy on shooting but it's inconsistent in the paint so this is a build that's gonna be able to do everything defense shoot speed boost and get contact though so yeah i'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to make it from the height weight wingspan all the way down to the position high charts attributes all the way down to the best takeover and the best bad setup so yeah man without further ado let's go ahead hop straight into it all right before we go too far into this video i want to make sure to go over this now we were at 4.2 percent we're all the way up to 9.7 percent but still 90 percent of y'all that are watching my videos aren't even subscribed i know y'all mess with the videos we're gonna be going so crazy so you might as well hit that sub button is that simple? Let's go! All right, so first things first is going to be the position. The position you want to go with for this build is going to be at the point guard position. You make it at any other build, you won't be able to get dimer and floor general. So you're ever going to make it at the point guard position. All right, next is going to be the pie chart. Now, they have a lot of different pie charts that's very similar to this. You got the shooting and finishing that's kind of like how you made it last year if you want to make an inside out playmaker or offensive threat but this year if you want to make it that way and be able to get contact dunks you have to go shooting and finishing but you're only going to get finishing hall of fame badges all right next is going to be the physical profile so for the physical profile you want to go with speed pie chart that's just that simple you don't want to go with anything else on this build all right so for the way i made it i want to be able to get more defensive but the way it's known to be made is you don't get 17 17 15 and 5 i don't really need that extra badge upgrade on my playmaking so i just went with 14 so i can actually be able to have that extra defensive badge upgrade so for the 17 badge upgrades for the finish we have close shot driving layup driving dunk all being max and then we have a standing dunk of a 38 and shooting we have three pointer mid range free throw all being max then we got a 64 post fade then when it comes to the playmaking we got pass accuracy ball handle being max and then we got a post move of a 35 then when it comes to the defensive rebounding we have a perimeter defense a lateral quickness a steal and a defense to rebound all being max then we got a 37 block now depending on how you play you can put that up on offensive rebound you can put that up on interior defense but i didn't put it up on interior defense because when you go down in weight your interior defense is going to go down either way so you're just going to be wasting those five attribute points in my or 10 attribute points in my opinion you can go block or offensive rebound depending on what you think is going to make the bigger difference um 37 block 38 offensive rebound if you think that's going to make a big difference Go off his rebound. I feel like I probably should have went off his rebound because I like getting more boards. The higher your rebound it is, it's gonna make it easier to do that. And if you go higher and up and weight, it's gonna actually go higher than 38 and 37. So I want that to be known. But yeah, that's just ended up being what I went. I went block, but you can go rebound. I wouldn't go into your defense because that's gonna go down all the way again. So yeah, um, but yeah, ended up coming out with 17, 17, 14, and six. 
All right, next is going to be the body type and the height. Now, the height, I went with a different height than what usually people go with because they change, like, the way you get pro drill moves. So, I just want to make sure everybody understand that. But the meta height is going to be six foot four. But the body type is very interesting. You can go skinny. You can go thick. It really depends on you. I went compact because that's, like, the most swole compact you can go or, like, the most swole skinny you can go. And then I went six foot five for video purposes. But the best height for this build is six foot four. If you want to be able to momentum and speed boost, without having takeover if you want to be able to do that all off rip at six foot four at 99 you can do momentum's off rip and you will be able to like have the highest tier of speed boosting but at six foot five you can have the highest tier of speed boosting off rip at 99 but you just won't be able to have the momentum's off rip like if you want to do momentum crossover and stuff like that off rip at 99 you won't be able to do that you have to have like a little bit of your take over a meter to be able to do that off rip so yeah the height i went with for the build video is six for five but the best height for this vid build is six for four i just want that to be known all right next is going to be the weight so for the weight we actually ended up going with 179 pounds but what i really did was i went all the way down on my weight until i stopped losing you know what I'm saying? Until I stopped gaining on speed, then I went back up so that I would lose as little bit as possible interior defense and strength. So that's a very big deal. Like I said, the reason we didn't go interior defense is because it's going to go down either way. And if you go up on it, it's going to go down even more. The only reason it only went down one is because we didn't touch it. So I just want that to be known. But yeah, that's the way we ended up going with on this build. All right, next, this is going to be actually one of the most pivotal parts of this video. If you're not paying attention right here, you're going to mess you're gonna miss a pretty important part so right here no matter if you're six foot four or six foot five you want to go up in wingspan because if you go up in wingspan this year you're not just gaining stuff on defense you're actually going to be gaining stuff on your finishing so that's going to actually help you to get contact dunks the ability to get it at like 96 or 97 because you're going to be getting plus one at 96 and plus two to all your attributes at 97 so for the way we making it you're going to be able to get all the contact dunks at 97 but we aren't going max wingspan we're going two notches down from max wingspan so that we can get a certain takeover so if you want to be able to get sharp takeover on this build you have to go two notches down on wingspan whether you're on a six foot five or a six foot four i just want that to be known all right, and next is going to be the takeover choice. So there's a lot of takeover choices you can go. Now, if you have finishing Hall of Fame badges, if you have contact dunk packages equipped at all, you probably know by now, you don't need Slasher Takeover at all this year. Like Slasher Takeover just overkill on the contact dunks. Now, if you have it, you're gonna be pretty unguardable when it comes to like driving when you have Slasher Takeover because you're gonna get a contact dunk every single time. But this is a build that can get contact dunks, that can speed boost, that can play defense and they can shoot. But the only thing about this game is you wanna be able to reach certain tiers when it comes to shooting. So you have a 77 three ball, as you can say, saw, when it came to going up in wingspan, it negatively affected your three ball. So when you got to 99, you're gonna be able to have an 81 three ball. But the one thing that makes sharp takeover so much more important than all these other takeovers is because it gives you plus 10 to your three pointer winning takeover slasher takeover gives you plus five shot grader takeover gives you plus five playmaker takeover gives you plus five now if you don't go sharp takeover the best one i would say is definitely going to be playmaker takeover because how overpowered that is right now but sharp takeover is the takeover we ended up going with on this build and the build comes out as a slasher build similar to steve francis john moran and john maul murray this is a build called slasher with sharp takeover just think about that that's a glitchy glitchy build people are not gonna know how to guard you at all all right, next, hopping into the best bad setups for this build. We're going to start off with the finishing. So we got Slithery Finisher, Contact Finisher, Giant Slayer, Relentless Finisher, and Showtime. I'm going to start off with the badge that people are going to be like, why would you put that on? Showtime It's actually one of the most overpowered badges in the game. It's kind of like how Heart Crusher was, but Heart Crusher got nerfed. This didn't get nerfed. What this does is anytime you go for a contact dunk or a flashy dunk, any type of lob dunk, you're going to be helping your teammates takeover meter so you're going to give yourself takeover and you're going to be giving your teammates takeover depending on how high showtime is the more takeover is going to give to your teammates and yourself so that's an important badge giant slayer another important badge this is going to be reducing the shot contest on every single time you go for a layup or a dunk so what this actually does is it makes you do more layups 
but in reality you're gonna get contested way less so in reality it's gonna help you if you have on badges like Slithery Finisher to dunk more and Contact Finisher to get more contact dunks. So if you go into more contact, it's going to be making you be able to finish your contact dunks a lot more, making you not miss them as much, if that makes sense, because you're not getting contested as much. So it's not like the defensive, like prowess of the person that you're dunking on is not going to be nearly as big of a deal, if that makes sense. Relentless Finisher is a badge that's going to help you dunk, lay up, make lobs, get contact dunks at an even higher rate especially when fatigued I've, some people have been coming in on my videos saying that badge doesn't work if you take that badge off and you put that badge on you're gonna make a lot more of everything that you're trying to do in this game and then if you take it off you're gonna see the big difference then contact finisher that's just a badge that's gonna help you get a lot more contact dunks as you get contact dunks packages that's gonna be 20 percent then you go bronze that's 35 percent silver is 50 percent then you got 65 percent of gold and that 80 percent that would be hall of fame that's what we have on but that also has has a negative thing to it it's gonna be creating contact contact in any type of situation so if you go for a layup it's gonna create contact you go for a dunk and you don't even get a contact it's gonna create contact which can be bad for you which can help you miss that so what we go with is literally finisher which is the best finishing badge in the game that's gonna be getting you the best animation possible every single time and it's gonna be creating more opportunities to get more dunks and it's gonna be making your dunk frequency tendency a lot a lot Hi, if you put this badge on, you will see the difference that it makes. And it cancels out all the negatives that Contact Finisher has. So yeah, that's the best finishing badge setup for this build. All right, next is going to be the best shooting badge setup for this build. So I went with a little bit different of what I have been using because they nerfed a lot of badges, like difficult shots that got nerfed. I don't really do as many fades. I really never really was a fade person to begin with. When I did do difficult shots that people don't know, if you do like snatch backs this year and you shoot off the snatch back, that actually, difficult shots actually help that shot this year. So I actually still like difficult shots, so I don't really know what to do with that, to be honest. But since we only had 17, I did go hot start. If you don't know what hot start does, that's one of the best, most underrated badges this year. Off the rip, it makes your shot percentage way higher than normal. But if you make that shot, it's kind of like green machine so high start the more shots you make and make and make off rip the higher percentage to make that next shot and the next shot and the next shot and it's gonna be making it easier to green and green and green but as soon as you miss the badge does nothing nothing so if you're playing 5v5 it's not really a good badge to be honest but if you're playing like park or something like that where you don't really want to miss at all hot start is a great badge for you then when it comes to badges like dead eye Dead eyes are very important badge when it comes to cancel out closeouts. So sometimes you probably see your meter not be nearly as big when it comes to like the yellow points of your meter. Or you sometimes see that you're not greening certain shots when people are closing out. That's because you don't have the dead eye to make your green window be able to stay the same no matter when people close out and it's gonna be helping people get easier to test so even when people try to close out on me sometimes if I have dead eye on I don't really get the craziest amounts of contests now the contest system in this game is already off kilter a little bit but dead eye makes it even a little bit more broken then we got corner specialist corner specialist is just a good badge to be able to shoot in the corner and if you want to do fade still you can you know what I'm saying? If you want to do face towards the corner, like mid-range, three-point line, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to help you do that. And silver is the best bang for your buck, in my opinion. Then you got Green Machine, Hazel Hunter, Ranger Standard. Those are the big three shooting badges. Ranger Standard is going to be helping you extend your range and shoot within your range and making it a lot easier to green within your range and make a lot more shots within your range. Hazel Hunter is going to make it a lot easier to green in your hot zones and have a way higher make percentage in your hot zones, which in turn is going to make you make more shots in your hot zones. Then as you're getting more green, with Ranger Stender and Hot Zone Hunter. Green Machine is going to be making it a lot easier to green after a green. So it's going to be making it a lot easier to shoot in general. And then after you get green, your make percentage is going so much higher. Even if you don't green that shot, you're going to be having a higher and higher chance to make that next shot after each green. All right, next. This is the reason why I personally said I don't really need 14 Badger Grades because me personally, um, I like playing two, so I don't really necessarily need floor general, you know what I'm saying? Now, maybe if I'm playing threes, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe if I'm playing 5v5, maybe, but I don't necessarily need floor general. So the main badges I really need is handles for days, quick for step, and unpluckable. 
Ankle break is like an extra, extra bad so that I can be able to be glitchy and be able to take ankles every single possession. Every single time I do a wild little snatch back or any type of move I want to do to be able to take ankles, I have that joint on just so I can be able to get people off kilter. You know what I'm saying? Handles for days is going to cancel out the stamination this game. Very important bag. Unpluckable helps you not get ripped nearly as much. Now, you can get bumped stolen, but when it comes to like just getting the ball completely ripped, it's very hard to do. Quick first step is going to be making whatever tier speed boost you're at. It's going to put it to the highest tier of speed boost that you can possibly do. So, like, say for instance, if you're at the highest tier of speed boost and you don't have quick first step on, you're not going to be speed boosting as fast as you would at bronze or at silver or at gold or at hall of fame. So, we have on gold that's the highest we can go for a build that doesn't have hall of fame that's going to be making your tier of speed boosting that much faster. Then we got floor general silver to pretty much give our teammates plus two to all their offensive stats, no matter if they're inside or outside, a guard, or a big. It doesn't really matter. It's going to give them plus two to all their offensive stats at gold it would do plus three and hall of fame would do plus four and last but not least is going to be the best defensive rebounding badge set up for this build so we got gold clamps silver interceptor and bronze intimidator now only badge i could probably argue that should be on here is pick dodger but pick dodger wasn't on here because we have to have that interceptor on to be able to pay them passing lanes as much as possible that's just something i love to do intimidator is gonna help you get a better shot contest you have to have it at least bronze I don't really advise anyone going past bronze. I could even say that you could take it off if you want to. You know what I'm saying? That's up to you at that point, to be honest. But clamps is going to be very important so that people can't blow by you and people be, really be able to stay in front of people. Some other badges you can actually think about going with is lightning reflexes. If you feel like you slide all over the place, lightning reflexes is going to help you a lot. So if you want to go lightning reflexes and clamps so that you can play the best on-ball defense possible, um, you can go with that too. You can either go sl silver lightning creep lightning reflexes silver clamps and silver pick dodges so that when you're trying to go around screens you're not going to slide too much when you're going around screens you can actually go through them a lot better with silver pick dodger and when people try to blow by you you can not slide so much and you can actually make play better defense on it with clamps it really depends on how you want to go with it on the defensive bad setup but yeah man that's going to be pretty much the end of this video this was the best slasher build the most fun build the best most overpowered guard build probably the best guard build in the game in my opinion um definitely the most do it all build in this game but yeah man go ahead leave a like on this video if you enjoy subscribe you know we got more videos coming out every single day so turn on post notifications be the first to every single one of our videos share this video to anybody to this will help we just got done with banger week man i hope y'all enjoyed that um i'm gonna be still be dropping bangers it's just not gonna be no giveaways within the videos y'all was going a little too crazy with them joints i'm not gonna lie but yeah like i said leave a like subscribe but again man it's your boy fish and I'm about to be a man. Head in the clouds, walk through the city, they taking you out. Bitches be talking, they running, they mouth. A bag in the back and a stick in the couch. You know what it's about. Uh, Had to cope with all the pain, so I'm about to die. Amen. Uh, they say he going too fast.